Hey, welcome to the next section of this course, Extending QGIS with Python. In this section, we'll have an introduction to scripting QGIS with Python. We'll start with an introduction to Actions, and then move on to the QGIS Python console, before we go into more advanced development of custom tools for the processing toolbox, and an explanation of how to create our own plugins. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with additional functionality using Actions. In this video, we'll first learn to configure our first Python action, and then open files using Actions. We'll also see how to open a web browser using Actions. Of course, a full-blown Python tutorial would be out of the scope of this course. The examples here therefore assume a minimum proficiency of working with Python. Python is a very accessible programming language, even if you are just getting started, and it has gained a lot of popularity in both the open source and proprietary GIS world. For example, ESRI's ArcPy, or PyQGIS. QGIS currently supports Python 2.7, but there are plans to support Python 3 in the upcoming QGIS 3.x series. Let's go ahead and learn add functionality using Actions. So, Actions are a convenient way of adding custom functionality to QGIS. Actions are created for specific layers, for example our populated places dataset, pop.shp. Therefore, to create actions, we go to Layer Properties, and then to the Actions tab. There are different types of actions, such as generic actions which start external processes. For example, you can run command line applications such as OGR2OGR. OGR2OGR is a command line tool that can be used to convert file formats, and at the same time perform operations such as spatial or attribute selections and reprojecting. Python actions execute Python scripts. Then, open actions, open a file using your computer's configured default application, that is, your PDF viewing application, for .pdf files, or your browser for websites, operating system actions, Mac, Windows and Unix, work like generic actions, but are restricted to the respective operating system. Let's close this good default and configure our first Python action. Click on the Create the Default Actions button on the right-hand side of the dialog to add some example actions to your pop layer. This is really handy to get started with actions. For example, the Python action called selected fields value will display the specified attributes value when we use the action tool. All that we need to do before we can give this action a try is to update it so that it accesses a valid attribute of our layer. For example, we can make it display the pop layers type attribute value in a message box. Let me show you how you could do this. First, select the selected fields value action in action list. Now, edit the action code at the bottom of the dialog. You can manually enter the attribute name, right here, or select it from the drop-down list and click on Insert Field. Let's now edit the action text and change the value as Type. Also set the name as Type from the drop-down and click on OK. To save the changes, click on Apply and OK. To use this action, close the Layer Properties dialog and click on the drop-down arrow next to the Run Feature Action button. This will expand the list of available layer actions, as we see here. From the drop-down, which you get here, go to the Selected Fields value. Click on the Selected Fields value entry, and then click on a Layer feature. This will open a pop-up dialog in which the action will output the feature's type value. So, as you click on different features, you'll get different output dialog. Of course, we can also make this action output more informative, for example by extending it. For this, we again need to go to the Layer Properties and modify the action text. Let's make the changes in the code. Type f underscore code, code desk. Let's apply it and click on OK. Now go to the Selected Fields value option and click on the layer. As you can see, this displays the type value on the first line and the f underscore code desk value on the second line. Now, to open files directly from within QGIS, we use the Open Actions. If you added the default actions in the previously, your layer will already have an Open File action. Go to Layer, and then Properties. The action is as simple as this one. We have the Open File here. Since none of our sample datasets contain a path attribute, we'll add one now to test this feature. Check out Section 3 if you need to know the details of how to add a new attribute. Let's open the attribute table and add the path. 
Toggle Editing, and then we add New Field. We name it as Path and change the size to 30. In the Paths column, add the path. We've added the paths in here. We'll open the default Image Viewer and PDF Viewer application, respectively. Now let's close this dialog. While this example used absolute paths stored in the attributes, you can also use relative paths by changing the action code so that it completes the partial path stored in the attribute value. For example, you can use this path to open .png files that are named according to the type attribute values. Another type of useful open action is opening the web browser and accessing certain websites. For example, go to Layers, Properties. Change the action text where the URL has been given and click on OK. Now let's apply it. It will open your default web browser and search for the type value using Google. Now, go and select the search on web based on attributes value. Then click on any attribute and you'll be redirected to the Google page. As you can see, it searched for the attribute value cabin. Similarly, if we check on some other attribute, it searches for two attributes as both the points were together. Similarly, we can try for more points. In this video, we've learned to add functionality using actions.